Nick Vandersloot. Nick Vandersloot. Oh, that's right. You, you were on the, on the sheet here. Good. Cloud bursting. Yes. So you were on the keynote um, yesterday. Was yesterday. It, it seems like a blur. Things are going crazy around here. Okay. That's for sure. So VMware. I mean, we just had him on here. Let's talk about VMware for a minute. So mm -hmm. just an opening question. I mean. The server business, you know, Palmer has put up a, a slide. Does that scare HP or not? I mean, because you have a lot of virtualization going on within HP. Yeah, we, well, we, we're the number one partner with VMware. There's more, you know, VMware that lands on HP servers than any other server in, in the marketplace. Yeah, so uh, very good relationship. And it, does it scare us? You know, this, I, I've heard this question m multiple okay. times is, did cons uh, consolidation, does that scare you? Uh, no, because we actually, you know, broke through a lot of backlogs for IT organizations as they solve consolidation problems. Does virtualization scare us because we'll sell less servers? Uh, no, we're actually selling more servers now than we ever did before, and lots of them running VMware. Um, and there's, uh, while there's a lot of virtual machines going out, there's still a lot of physical machines going out there as well, you know? So it's, it's, it's a combination. It's still complexity that needs to be kind of abstracted away. I mean, you know, Intel did not lose steam by cloud, I mean they're growing because of cloud. So yeah, it's it. I think to a large extent, when I talk to businesses, they have so many projects that are on the back burner because they don't have enough infrastructure or manpower or people in order to to implement the ideas. There is no shortage of ideas, and if we can break through some of those backlogs by making infrastructure more efficient, making people more efficient, and that's where cloud comes into play. Uh, and you know, push button, deploy an application. Well, let's get the the our customers, our clients, focused on their business instead of you know worrying about the infrastructure. We just want to deploy it. Right. So virtualization is the first stage in that journey. It's an on-premise dynamic, and and customers are are battling that at different phases. Now we get to cloud. Yeah. Right. It takes it to a whole new level. Yeah. T t take me through that progression, right? Because virtualization is predominantly a VMware, you know, dominated world, right? But HP can infuse themselves in the discussion to kind of enable customers from virtualization to cloud. So when, when I think about cloud and what, what customers really want is they want to deploy a service, an entire service immediately now, and um, businesses say, you know, I want to deploy a service, and it multi, might be a multi-tier, multi-node application, um, so it's server, storage, infrastructure, VMs, physical machines, and they want to deploy it because they want to get their, their service out into the market and collect checks, right? right. And, and VMware produces VMs, it's great, and we leverage those, but what we do with, with HP, we have a, an offering called HP Cloud System, and it is the most integrated, complete solution for building a private cloud, or for a service provider, building a public cloud, and then um, even working across a hybrid cloud environment. And it does exactly that. You know, the, the, the IT organization, the IT resources, just turns into a pool of resources, and we expose, IT exposes a service catalog to the business, and they can deploy a Microsoft Exchange system. They can deploy a invoicing system. They can deploy an ad campaign. Just pick it for service, hit go, and it reaches in and powers on infrastructure and, and deploys it. And it, when, it, when it hits threshold X, Y, or Z, it bursts over into the, the public Yeah, and that's cloud, what I right? demonstrated yesterday is we now, with cloud system, have the capability to um, automatically, when you run out of resources, to be able to reach out to a service provider. In the case of the, the demonstration I did yesterday, we reached out and grabbed resources from a service provider by the name of Savas right. and pulled in virtual machines from Savas uh, into that service. So, and, and again, the business wasn't looking for, the customers that I'm working with, wasn't lo looking for a VM. Right. They were looking for their advertising campaign, which needs two VMs, for a web tier and two physical machines for a database tier. We hit go while I was on stage and it deployed two VMs from Savas, two physical machines from the local resource pool, knitted them together, installed the software and brought it up. So we did a case study on, on Zynga and, and the aha moment for those guys was the ability for RightScale to help them kind of have a cohesive hole between on-premise and cloud. Right, so you guys have the orchestration, the automation, the framework to kind of bridge those two together, right? Right. Is that where? Uh, so, so um, what we do with cloud system is we've even integrated a policy engine, so that when uh, you you define your application, you might define attributes for it, like the um, the you know it's a medical system, the database 
do not allow it go onto the public cloud. Um, or uh, inside of that policy engine, you've got rules based on cost, based on locality to customers, um, b based on compliance and, and, and you know, HIPAA rules and such like that. So then when you deploy a service, it can look at all the resource pools available, be they service provider or private, and pull together those resources and then hand it back to the customer as a running service. So I'm a retailer and I want to run my web tier I can put that up on the cloud, but mm -hmm. I keep my database tier on premise. Sure, you can do that, absolutely. And another another use case uh, that I actually ran into with um, one of our uh, POC customers is they expanded into a new market. Um, just use an example, Singapore, and they don't have a data center in Singapore, but um, they, so they wanted to deploy their 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 services into Singapore for the clientele that they have there. Well, click, go, you're done. Right. right? You're paying for it as you use it. And, and, and that's you know, the power that you get with a hybrid cloud environment where you've got intelligence across all of this as well, is get the resources where you need them, when you need them, and both private and public. And, and so, so Patrick Carr yesterday on, on stage at one of his keynotes talked about HP building their own public cloud you know, by the summer. Mm -hmm. Does that, so, so then the option becomes, you know, I can burst over to Amazon, to Savvis, or by the way, burst over to HP. And, and it has levels of performance and availability that maybe you know, differentiates it versus the existing public cloud. Yeah, the, um, uh, we're already out in the marketplace with uh, HP Enterprise Compute Service as a cloud offering that you can pay for by the drink. Um, and Patrick's probably alluding to other things that's not in my you know, department, the, uh, the public cloud services that HP has. I'm developing a solution that um, allows our customers or service providers to build a public cloud. But yes, we tap into HP as a public cloud with this uh, it's agnostic and, it will be right. agnostic and to service providers and those service providers can use HP cloud system or use their own homegrown technology maybe using operations orchestration and server automation we'll tap into those because we've got a connector um, that'll be a available later on this year a connector where you just translate between cloud system and whatever service provider API that is out in the marketplace Right, and then you can manage that from a single pane of glass. Single or... pane of glass, and that's that's nice because now you know you're deploying a service. I I can deploy it, and it'll land on top of Hyper-V, VMware, physical machines, or you know virtual machines from a cloud provider, and and HP as a service provider, we just introduced uh, local bursting yesterday as well, and what that means is. I can burst, but I'm not going to actually go out to a service provider. You burst locally. Locally, HP's going to have extra capacity on site at the customer site and burst into that and you pay for it as you use it. And that helps out those customers that say, and there's there's a few of them that come to me and say, I cannot put anything in the cloud based on my, my regulations, based on the industry that right. I'm in. So, so the, 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 the best definition I've heard of for cloud is it's a cloud if you don't have to pay for it up front. And that could be the business unit. You know, th think of the consumer, right? Mm -hmm. If the business unit doesn't have to pay for it, they pay for it as they consume it, right? Mm -hmm. Now the IT department obviously has to make some investment, but you guys are saying we're going to put equipment on site and you pay for it as you use it. Yes, and uh, so we'll put equipment on site and you know, the customer would put um, a, set, a, a fixed amount of equipment on site and we'll add, let's say, 20% extra to that and they can tap into that as needed and they pay for it as they use it. And, and uh, so that's a good definition for cloud. The, um, uh, when IT presents a private cloud to their end users, right. they're charging for it as they exactly use it. So right. it's kind of an internal cloud, pay for it as you use it as well. Yeah, yeah, so. if you just look at the customer as the business unit that way, right? Yeah. It, it, yeah. it still tries to hold. You right? always just kind of put a circle around a different organization as the right. quote unquote service provider. So, so, you know, customer profile-wise, where do you see your customers today as they're kind of adopting cloud? Is it, it, it they're really kind of getting to, the, to this hybrid cloud model first, and then over time they figure out to the extent they want to move to cloud, it's kind of a let, let's date before we get married type situation from an adoption profile standpoint? Well, I believe, and we believe at HP, that there isn't an endpoint of everybody going to public cloud or everybody going to private cloud or uh, or IT traditional IT infrastructure disappearing. We think it's going to be a, a balance across those because there's pluses and minuses for each of those. 
and we're going to see customers um, invest in private cloud and be able to uh, invest in getting resources from the public cloud as well. And the, the scary thing that people have uh, run into that prevent them from doing this is each come with their own management system, right. each come with their own, you know, you'd have an, have an army of people taking, of traditional, taking care of traditional IT, your private cloud and your public cloud. Um, that's where we've simplified things and we're investing on management across all of that, transparent bursting across all of that. You just say, give me an app and it'll grab it from the right resource pool based on the service levels and the, the attributes that you need so that you can get best of all of those. Now, where are customers in his option? Well, everybody, has traditional IT, I would say. Uh, I'd say about 70, 80% of people, of the activity is in actually private cloud arena. People are trying to, the IT organizations are trying to turn themselves into a, a private cloud in the infrastructure space. Right, right. Uh, I made qualifica qualification there. And then there's, um, there's a good uptake of infrastructure as a service, public cloud. In the software as a service space, I'd say there's a lot more going on in the public cloud uh, software as a service space. So, you know, we can slice and dice the cloud market quite granular right. here if you wanted to. And so does Cloudburst, do I need to be an HP customer today to, or, or can I slide this in as a module or a solution that kind of enable me to get to cloud over time? So what you can do today um, is um, connect up with HP or our partners and get a cloud system uh, inside of your data center and that gives you a private cloud in your data center and um, it can be Greenfield, new system, or we can pull in existing equipment, pull in your you know, equipment that you bought from us in the past and, and build out a private cloud. And then when you're ready, you can flip the switch and just start reaching out. That cloud system will automatically reach out and grab resources from service providers. I did the, the demonstration that I've done, for instance, uh, to, to burst out to a service provider is in a technical tech preview today where we have certain customers in POC uh, environments today using it. Uh, and that'll go general availability later on this year. So it'll be just part and parcel general availability for the product and then you just sign up with the service provider, register with them, and then uh, it appears in cloud system and you burst Nick, away. Nick, I want to ask you a couple questions about uh, one, strategy. Mm -hmm. And then what your goals are for this year. Obviously it's a growing market, it's good to see the cloud thing fully come into to pick here for HP, have that come together. Mm -hmm. So what's the strategy, and then what's your goal for the next year, in terms of on the business side? So strategy, I think I kind of described that a little bit, is we're trying to provide our customers with a, um, a simplified view to IT uh, across traditional, private, and public environments, and drive it to make it dead easy, really simple to, um, tap into any of those uh, those options in the marketplace. That That's absolutely strategy, uh, and we're doing that by implementing, uh, you know, cloud system offerings like cloud system into the marketplace. And, and we're fueling that with converged infrastructure, you know, the best servers, the best storage, and the best networking in the industry. Um, and our strategy includes being very heterogeneous at the same time, because we know every customer that we talk to is got a heterogeneous environment, so we want to tap into that. Now, for goals... Say uh, tactics, we'll just go down the, kind of the Hoshian planning mm -hmm. of HP. That's a strategy. What are the, some of the tactics that you got to do to, get so, to make that happen? Because it's complicated. It's complicated. So a lot of it is, well, some of it is, is education. Um, there's, well, you tell me, is there a, when you talk to uh, a customer or clients in the, uh, in, the, in the industry, is there a common definition of what cloud is? Uh, I was just in a, yeah, a lower session. Cost. <laughs> yeah, lo lower cost. Lower labor. Uh, lower cost. Uh, lower, uh, <laughs> faster agility. Uh, yesterday, I was in a in a group, and there was disparate op opinions as to what cloud is. Is it software as a service? Infrastructure as a service? Is it private cloud? Is it public cloud? Many people actually just lock into cloud equals public cloud, and, um, and if there's an on-premise component. I mean, obviously, public cloud has been out there, and it's different. I mean, you know, VMware wasn't really involved much in that, although you know, Citrix has been, but the private is where the action is, hybrid is where the action is. So what we're interested in knowing is, you know, where you see the, the customers, they got to have some on-premise. Obviously they will always have prem, on-prem stuff. So what is the, how do they get to that middle ground? And is it, is it well, because they have partnerships? And you, is that why hybrid's so Well, big? definitely partnerships. We announced the Cloud Agile program, for instance, yesterday as well. 
uh, where we're partnering up with many service providers in the industry. So HP as a service provider, but also we're open. Many other service providers, I think we announced a partnership with Verizon and, and, and others um, in the cloud space. They're cloud providers, um, they're pub- private cloud hosters, uh, uh, public cloud providers. Uh, so we're working with them to uh, enhance their their market reach it's through our cloud our out there f- only as a shingle because it's still unknown and, and it, people are preferring online online providers for mm-hmm. cloud, which is the multi tenancy issue has been solved. But mm-hmm. um, ultimately, the channel will be both direct cloud for HP and mm-hmm. partnership, right? Absolutely. And Absolutely. So that's kind of out there, indirect and direct, if you yep. will. Um, the question that I want to ask is. How are you looking at, as a, from a utility standpoint, the security side? Obviously, we ask this question all the time around security with the, with the hacks that RSA was just compromised, uh, the token stuff, and mm-hmm. PlayStation obviously has been documented for, for months now. Um, that's a concern. So how is the utility of, of the cloud dealing with the security? Is it a do-over? Dave Vellante and I always talk about that. You know, what's the paradigm there? So you need to, um, when we put in a private cloud solution, for instance, we very much think about mission critical security, absolute, you know, multi-tenancy, keeping uh, applications separated from the cells, um, and data separated from uh, uh, one app's data, separated from another app's data. Uh, For instance, with our three-part storage, and I think we just had David Scott previously talking here, we can take a, uh, down at an infrastructure level, we can take a, um, a three-par storage array and divide it up and make it a multi-tenant environment with multiple customers running on the same device and you have complete you know, uh, separation between those. Now we have to do that with every aspect of infrastructure and then bring that up to the cloud level so that uh, the entire service is multi-tenant, and that's and that's so we're investing on the component levels and at the at the cloud level as well. And when do we when do we get multi-cloud? Multi-cloud, right? So that if I need to, <laughs> well, good. you know, you you have everyone kind of runs out and builds their cloud, but mm-hmm. but you know, federation is always going to be. Better. Cloud providers getting bursting to other cloud providers for additional capacity. Yeah, whether it be dual rights or just, I mean, to, to hedge your bets, right? And no one, you, you can get data in the cloud, but you can't always get it out, right? It's the Hotel California problem, <laughs> we right? Heard that, it, so that yesterday. Yeah, and so how does that, you know, cloud is not magic. It doesn't mm-hmm. allow you to just ignore IT best practices, right? Mm-hmm. You need HA, you need um, uh, no single points of failure, right? So mm-hmm. ideally, you can you can spread it across and federate it, and, and that's a multi-cloud story. How far off are we from that? Obviously, you got to walk before you run. Obviously, got to walk before you run, right? But but how far is, is that? Years, days, weeks, months? Well, by summer. With um, uh, with what I talked about and what I demonstrated to be able to burst out to a service provider, you know, we'll, we'll put a single service provider into our catalog, and then. Um, shortly thereafter, there'll be two, three, four, five different service providers, and you'll be able to burst from a single system to be able to burst some of your resources to one service provider, another set of your resource to a, to another service provider, so you're not putting all your eggs in one basket, right. per se. And actually, I've worked with uh, one of the customers that I was dealing with, is that was their policy. They they worked and said, we want to be you know, a POC customer on your bursting, and here's my list of service providers I want to burst to because I want to have, if something goes wrong here, I've got a, a backup plan to go there. Nick, I want to ask you one final question before we wrap up um, mm-hmm. to kind of close out. Uh, share with the folks out there uh, your vision of the next five years. Obviously, this is kind of the utility stuff. We're kind of in the weeds of some you know, cloud. Because oh. you have to deal with the day-to-day. But let's step back, look at the 20-mile stare, and say, you know, where are we in five years? <laughs> um, right now, commonly, we talk about internally within HP. We're actually at like um, stage zero of the cloud. Uh, everybody's talking about cloud and cloud infrastructure and, and cloud uh, capabilities, and we're putting a lot of great stuff in the marketplace, but there's a lot of evolution that needs to come, a lot of investment that has to come, especially in the software in the software space, to glue this together, to manage this holistically as, um, as, as a single unit, to, to tie back into traditional IT processes, to I- evolve um, traditional IT processes into you know, cloud compatible IT processes. So I think it's it's technology is one piece of it. Processes really, 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 really need to change over the next two, three, four, five years in order for cloud to really break free and take off. Okay, Nick Vanderspeep, Director of IIS Strategy at HP. Thanks for joining us, coming us on the Cube and joining us. Appreciate the knowledge. Uh, cloud is at the beginning, stage zero, and uh, it will grow. 
great opportunity for everybody involved, developers, companies, the big companies, and also the white spaces that are available. And that's an exciting time. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you.